Hi everyone, this is Chris from A Bar Above, and today's video post is going to be different from the ones we've done in the past. We're actually going to begin a series, a multi-week series, focusing specifically on techniques and proper techniques within cocktail bars. Now the reason for this is I remember when I first moved to San Francisco as a bartender, I'd been bartending for quite a few years and I thought my skill set was pretty good. You know, I was a cocktail uh, or I was a bar manager crafting my own cocktails, you know, and having control over a menu. And I thought that my skill set was pretty damn good and I was kind of ready to take it to the next level. But what I realized when I started taking a look around and working in craft bars is that my skill set was kind of embarrassing. Um, you know, I could still craft a really great cocktail and the flavors were fantastic, but the physical techniques I was utilizing were, I stuck out like a sore thumb, like I've not done this before. So what we're going to do is we're going to focus on specific skills. We're going to show you why and, you know, kind of give you the answers I was looking for when I first started uh, attending cocktail bars. So this week we're going to focus on proper techniques and proper tools to be utilizing for stirring. Let's go ahead and make a rule now that if the cocktail that you're preparing is all spirit based, for example, Negroni, Manhattan, Martini, those should be stirred. Um, if they have any kind of juice or cream or egg whites, those are the drinks that you want to go ahead and shake. The reason for this is a couple different things. First of all, whenever you shake something uh, in a mixing tin, you introduce a lot of air. And when you make a Manhattan or a Martini and you shake it, you begin to pour it out, you're going to notice that when it hits the glass, it's a lot more murky. It has a lot of air kind of dissolved into it, and it's not going to be as see-through as something that you stir. The other thing um, to pay attention to when you're stirring a Manhattan or um, a uh, man martini is notice the change in the liquid itself. So when you begin to pour it out, when you stir it, the viscosity is going to be a much denser. It's going to look like syrup when you pour it out versus that shaken drink where it's going to be more thin like water. So it's definitely going to affect the body and the mouthfeel also. So if you're utilizing mixing glasses behind your bar, it's a good idea to get in the habit of chilling your glassware down. Um, the reason for this is it's going to make your final cocktail a couple extra degrees colder and every little bit is going to help. Now when you're ready to begin building your drink, go ahead and dump all your ice out and your water and uh, get, as, get rid of as much of the water as possible. And at this point, now we can begin to introduce our spirits. And uh, so just imagine, um, we're going to use water now, but imagine that was vodka. The reason we're putting this in now is because if we had a bunch of ice in here and we begin to add our room temperature vodka to it, what's going to happen is the minute the spirit hits the ice, it's going to begin the dilution process. The fact that our mixing glass is cold and we add our spirits to it, it's going to go ahead and drop the spirit temperature down a couple extra degrees and that's going to affect the final dilution. It's going to be less dilute so you'll taste your spirits a little bit more. So now that we have our spirits in there and they've already begun to chill, now we can go ahead and add our ice. But before we do that, let's go ahead and add our mixing spoon. And this will avoid that weird kind of moment where you're trying to get your spoon into the cocktail. Just a little bit easier this way. Um, now when we add our ice, Make sure that you top this thing off. You want a good amount of ice all the way to the top of your mixing glass to impart a good dilution and um, just a uh, good chill to your, uh, to your drink. So when you're stirring, you want to kind of imagine a clock, right? And you're kind of just pushing your spoon around the side of the, the glass here. But you're allowing your fingers to do all the work. This is not a wrist motion. You're not using any of your arm. You're just using your fingers. Um, so we're not churning butter here. So um, when you use your spoon, just go ahead and use it like this. You have your two fingers on the top, and you have your two fingers on the bottom here. When you're stirring, you're kind of just bringing it around, and as you're moving forward, you're pushing with your bottom fingers pulling with your top, pushing with the bottom, turning with the top, and it's all in the fingers. You don't really need a lot of wrist at all. Um, the fact that it's on the side of the glass means it's going to do most of the work for you. 
Um, so that's kind of how you get a good rhythm on in mixing, is just by utilizing your fingers. Now you should be able to do this technique both directions. And you should be able to do it with both hands. Now the reason for this is, imagine that you're doing one cocktail at a time. Your, your efficiency is not going to be very good because you're not utilizing your other hand. So by utilizing both hands, that frees up this hand to do something else. Maybe it's build a cocktail, maybe it's shake a cocktail, maybe it's bring up a credit card, whatever. You know, you should be comfortable with doing um, any task behind the bar with either hand. So practice, you know, a couple days with one hand, practice a couple days with another hand, so that way you're confident in both. Uh, if you notice that your dominant hand you're using all the time, spend a week Focus on just doing the one hand that's the weakest. And this will help to kind of build up that confidence. So now that we have our cocktail properly chilled and diluted, you want to start utilizing a julep strainer and not a Hawthorne strainer from this point on. You could definitely use a Hawthorne strainer and it'll get the job done. But the practical reason for this is the coils in a Hawthorne strainer are meant to catch little tiny fragments of fruit pulp and egg whites. It's kind of what they're there for. So if you were to make this cocktail for a guest sitting right in front of you and it's beautiful, it's properly chilled, it's ready, and you put your Hawthorne strainer in and you begin to pour it and you start to notice little tiny pieces of fruit pulp or the egg white that we mentioned fall into the drink, you see it, your guest sees it, you're going to have to throw it away and start all over. So that's the practical reason for utilizing a julep strainer. Um, you don't have any of the carryover from previous cocktails. So from here on out, there's a couple ways you could do this. You could leave the spoon in if you want to, or you can remove it um, to get your julep strainer in there. If you're going to go ahead and keep your spoon in there, just go ahead and add the julep strainer in it. Now you want to go ahead and grab the spoon with your finger. And if everything's been done correctly up to this point, what you'll notice when you pour this drink out is it doesn't have any ice fragments in it. And the body of the drink, the body of the cocktail, is more syrupy. It has its own texture and body that a shaken cocktail just is not going to have. So there you have it. This is um, the techniques that I've learned over the last couple of years that have really made a difference for me behind the bar and the practical reasons why I do it. Uh, hopefully you find this interesting. From here on out, every other week or so, we're going to have a video specifically focused on techniques. So like I said, I hope you find this interesting. And until next time, have a great shift, guys, and cheers. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, find us on Google+, or visit us at abarabove.com.